Hi guys, Super Secret Tech here, and I wanted to just spend a little bit of time while we're waiting on path building to update uh, to go over the new masteries uh, because uh, we have the JSON files, so they're all out, um, and that's something that we can take a look at. Um, so first off, Elemental Mastery. Uh, the first one is exposure you inflict applies at least negative 18% to the effective resistance. So that's going to be like all the elemental masteries are going to be super good for uh, if you're doing more than one damage type. Um, and then obviously if you're doing a specific damage type, you're probably going to want to focus on that specific damage type. Just by generally how they work because there's more random or multiples involved um the next one is 60 pursuit reduced reflected elemental damage taken that's big um that in eagle is 100 percent chance well 110 percent chance so if uh that makes reflect very easy to fix if you're only doing ellie uh which is really really cool uh, the next one, gain 10% of physical damage as extra damage of random element. That's huge uh, if you're doing any kind of fizz build. 40% um, increased effect of non-damaging elements. So that will be things like um, chill. Um, and so that's nice. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but it's also not the worst thing in the world. Uh, 15 to all Ellie res. Again, pretty nice. 1% of mental damage leeches energy shield. That's probably the one I would go to uh, for most builds because most of the time um, I'm going to be playing CI if I'm going to be playing some kind of self-cast because this is really like self-cast stuff. Um, all right, next, sword mastery. So plus three to melee strike range with swords. That's really good. That's really, really good. 20% um, chance to impale enemies on hit with attacks. 8% uh, chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a unique enemy. That's big because that's going to allow um, basically anyone that is a frenzy charged base character like Flicker Strike or anything like that. That is going to give you a exponential growth uh, towards being able to boss, which is very, very big. And then you can add on to that. Um, offhand accuracy is equal to main hand accuracy while wielding a sword. I'm not sure how often this would be used, but there is definitely a world where that's good. Um, I don't know what the niche like go to thing uh, for that specifically would be, but there's a possibility there. 120% uh, increased critical strike chance with swords and minus 20 multi. Um, that's huge. Um, with the changes that they're making, it looks like more of the issues are going to be with getting to crit cap. Like multi, you can already scale through the roof. So getting to crit cap is the biggie uh, for melee specifically. It is still the biggie for spells too, but it's more the biggie for melee. Um, and then the last one, 50% reduced enemy chance to block sword attacks. Um, that's not as big outside of PvP, but that's like a PvP node. Axe Mastery. Enemies you hit are destroyed on kill. That's big. That's so big. So now there's a reason to go axes if you're playing like Impale Cyclone or whatever in you don't want to deal with like dd and you don't want to deal with mortars and things like that like now there's a reason to be like oh yeah i'm gonna go get the biggest burliest two-handed axe i can find um bleeding you inflict deals damage 15 percent faster 40 percent increased onslaught effect 30 percent increased damage while in blood stance 15 percent increased area of effect while in sand stance 10% more damage with hits and elements against enemies that are on low life. Again, that's really good for bossing. Um, attacks with axes or swords grant plus one rage on hit. No more than once every second. I haven't, to be just very clear, messed around with rage enough to know if that's huge or not. I'm guessing it's better than not having it. Um, Alright, Staff Mastery. Now this stuff I know. 
Recover 2% of energy shield when you block spell damage while wielding a staff. And 2% of life when you block attack damage while wielding a staff. That's big. Um, so Zergle's Crank exists. And you can easily get max block with staffs and Zergle's Crank. With the access to either going Glancing Blows, Guardian, or uh, Gladiator. Any of those are, are really easy to get. Max block. You can even get max block as like a cultist. Um, so... 2% of ES at 75% spell block is nuts. That means you don't, that makes up for not having a spell block shield, uh, which is really, really good. Um, and it'll make things like circles actually like viable, especially with the energy shield recharge changes um, and the changes to Wicked Ward. Um, I mean, it's going to half that, but still, even half that is good like very good um all right next 30 percent increased defenses while wearing a staff again just to help you pump those numbers up uh which is a good thing uh eight percent chance to block attack damage if you've been stunned if you stunned an enemy recently that's better for if you're doing like earthquake or something along those lines um but it's still viable uh 20 percent chance to double stun duration same thing. Uh, so that's more melee stuff. Gain and Hunley might on block for three seconds. That's actually pretty good. Uh, that's a significant damage increase. And 60% to critical strike multiplier if you haven't dealt a critical strike recently. So that's probably good for triggering like elemental overload. Um, so that's something to think about. Because it gives you, well, no, that gives you multi, not chance. Never mind. It's not as nearly as good as I was hoping it would be. It would be good for the big one shot builds because then they can just not use it for a little while and then boom and then just crush everything on screen. That's what it'll be good for. Mace mastery. All right. All damage with maces and scepters inflict chill. That's insane for Glacial Hammer. Um, I still don't know how good Glacial Hammer would be because strike skills just don't have enough range to compete with AoE skills, unfortunately. Um, I wish they would do uh, more to make it where there is enough damage going out from the strike where it blows up packs, but until that is consistently viable while leveling um i don't see maces or specter scepters ever getting the same amount of love uh or will strike skills in general ever getting the same amount of love than an aoe skill will um just because aoe skills at least have the potential to clear even if they don't have the best boss damage more people care about clearing and this is going to be a clear speed league um where you're going to need to do some damage but it's really about the clear speed um so i don't know like it's good but i don't know how useful it will be um the next one is 20 percent increased area of effect if you've dealt a critical strike recently that's pretty good exactly what i just talked about aoe's king um crush enemies on hit with maces and Sept. that's good that's really good because the crush increases the damage that they take so that's a positive 12 percent chance to deal double damage with attacks if attack time is longer than one second that's good for big beefy burly hits uh hits that stun enemies have calling strike oh my goodness that's big it's like giving you free access to call uh increased stun duration on enemies okay all that's pretty good minion offensive mastery minions attack overwhelm 20 percent family Physical damage reduction, that's big. Minions penetrate 8% of cursed enemies' elemental resistance. That's also big. Have 25% chance to gain unholy might for 4 seconds on kill. That's big. Minions have 100% increased critical strike chance. Minions have 200 accuracy ratings. And 20% increased effective offerings. So, the crit and the accuracy are really big. Um... Because those are 
one of the things that really hold minions back in a lot of ways. And there's actually like unique items and things that most people run to make up for those deficiencies naturally with minions. And so having those um, as selectable uh, from anywhere on the tree is very nice where you don't have to path all over to go get this one node. Shield Mastery, so this is going to be another one. I, I'm actually going to know most of these. Um, Counterattacks have a 50% chance to deliberate on hit for one second. That's very useful if you are able to fit in counterattacks. Most current shield builds do not use counterattacks um, but that might be enough of a reason to try to use counterattacks um, they're in a really weird spa space they haven't really been uh, messed with in forever and there is the i'm gonna just six link well you can use the shield you could have two six linked counterattacks um, but i don't think they're ever gonna do enough damage to be worth actually using um, and again, it, it's the AOE problem. Like, it's not as fun of a playstyle. Um, but yeah, if you have like, like I've used Reckoning as a way to proc Fortify, um, and a way to proc like Bleed or Poison and things like that before, or even to proc Curses. Um, so there might be something to that of using that as your Curse Trigger, um, which would be really really cool. The next one, 1% chance to block attack damage per 5% chance to block on equipped shield. So most equipped shields will roll anywhere between 20 and they'll go up to around 35 uh, flat. So if we do on the low end of 20, that's 4% chance to increase block damage. If we go on the high end of 35, that's 7% chance uh, to block attack damage. That's a whole cluster that you can basically avoid having to pick up. So that's pretty big. Um, intimidate enemies on four seconds on block while holding a shield. That's also very, very big. Um, just gives you an extra defensive layer. 20% uh, to avoid elemental elements while holding a shield. That's huge. Um, that way you don't have to be forced into um, running immunities, like raw immunities, because Gladiator... Um, and Guardian don't really have good raw immunities. Um, so that gives a way to uh, avoid uh, with some extra nodes, obviously, as well, or some extra gear. 2% increase attack damage per 50 armor or evasion rating on shield. That's big. I will probably be using that. I'm right now, just to kind of give you guys a heads up, um, once path building updates, I'm probably going to be putting out two build guides. I'm probably going to be putting out one for a shield crush character, and I'm probably going to be putting out another one that will be for a storm brand guardian. Um, I've kind of played around with both of them a little bit and got like a little bit of an idea of what I want to do with them. So once we have that finalized skill tree, I can kind of play with the numbers and tweak them and kind of see uh, where we can get them to with like decent gear. Uh, the last one is 1% chance to critical strike multiplier per 10 maximum energy shield on shield. So that one gives you a reason to go a hybrid shield. Uh, if you want to focus on crit for my shield crush, I will most likely go resolute technique. Um, just because I think I can get a better raw damage output that way. Um, bleed Mastery. So, moving while bleeding doesn't cause you to take extra damage. Um, that's pretty nice. That's a nice quality of life. Increased damage with bleeding inflicted on poisoned enemies, so that gives you a reason to double dip. Um, that might, that one note might see a resurgence in Blackheart Rings. Um, so if you don't know, a Blackheart Ring is a Faded Unique um, that is uh, based on the low-level Fizz Ring. Um, so it might actually make that Unique get some popularity, which would be really cool. 60% increased Bleed Duration. 80% increased Critical Strike Chance against Bleeding Enemies. That's big. Because if you go bleed, you kind of want to go crit. 
because you want to get those huge explosions. Um, and you're basically going to always be at 100% chance to bleed. So you're basically getting 80% critical strike chance against anything that has been hit once. So if you're playing a fast hitting build or if you're playing a uh it's also really good against bosses too because again 100% chance. So that gives you a lot of boss damage. Um then the next one is 3% to damage over time multiplier for bleeding per endurance charge. That's pretty big. I wish it would have been a frenzy charge. That would have been huge. Um cuz every bleed character I've ever ran uh, basically has used frenzy charges. Some of them have used endurance charges, but all of them have used frenzy charges. Impale mastery. So I'm not going to know as much about the call of steels, just to be 100% frank with you. Uh, Dread banner has 100% increased mana recovery efficiency. I don't think that makes it free. I could be wrong. If it makes it free, that's huge. Impaled damage deal dealt to enemies impaled by your overwhelms. 20% physical damage reduction. That seems really strong. Because I knew I would, anytime I ran impale, I would spec into the overwhelm stuff. So that's big. Call steel deals reflected damage with 40% increased area of effect. That seems good. Uh, call steel has 40% increased use speed. That also seems good. Call of Steel has four to maximum steel shards. Also seems good. Causes 10% increased reflect damage. I don't... I'm sure there's a reason. Oh, those are both together. So it's either increased AoE and speed or maximum charge and increased reflected damage. So one is clearly more of a clear speed build. One is clearly more of a bosser. 20% uh, increase effect of impales you inflict on non-impaled enemies. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Totem mastery. These I'll know. Totem action speed cannot be modified to below base value. Okay, so there's a world where that's really good. Because that keeps them consistent. Um, support skills that would summon a totem have a 30% chance to summon two totems instead. That's nice as well. That's a great quality of life. Uh, make it where you don't always have to use uh, support everything with multi totems. So that gives you an extra link back. 5% of damage from hits is taken from your nearest totem's life before you. That's a great quality of life. Uh, totems taunt enemies around them for one second when summoned. So that's good if you're replacing your totems consistently. Um, and it's a it, it's again a good defensive layer. So there's it, it's definitely a positive. Uh, sixty percent increased global critical strike chance if you summon a totem recently, and then fifty percent increased totem placement range. So range is big because range lets you basically place it at the edge of the screen. Uh, which is really, really nice. It also makes it where you are going to be able to um, off screen a little bit better or keep the screen you're on clear. Um, so that is actually pretty big. Crit. Okay, I know crit pretty well. 50% uh, increased effect of non-damaging ailments you inflict with critical strikes. Of non-damage. Okay. So more stuns, more freezes, more ch or not for yeah, well more frozen, more ch okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty five percent chance to critical strike multiplier against unique enemies. That's nice. More boss damage. Stuns from critical strikes have a hundred percent increased duration. That's actually really big. Um, most people don't realize that you get if you're running any kind of physical, and you're critting. Even if you're not, even if you're not specced into high stuns, um, you're going to get stuns. Uh, it's it's like frozen or chill, right? Like you're going to just freeze things. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus three to all critical support gems. So that would give you a level twenty four critical strike uh, chance and a level twenty four 
critical strike multiplier if you're running 21s. That's pretty big. You take 30% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. That's also very, very big. That's huge. 50% um, increased critical strike chance against enemies on full life. That's massive. So that really synergizes well with Inquisitor. Um, that basically doesn't get the pin stuff. It, it just focuses on the initial hit and killing things in one shot. Um, that may really help Inquisitor a lot where if you can deal like a little bit of damage, like just enough damage that you crit and you're doing it every time when they're on full life, um, it's also good to start with bosses that way because that means like if you're going to apply an ailment, you're basically applying it right off the bat, um, which is very, very nice. Mana Mastery. Regenerate 5 mana per second when you have Arcane Surge. That's a nice quality of life. Recover 10% of mana over 1 second when you use a guard skill. Another huge quality of life. 10% of damage taken recouped as mana. That's very nice. There are certain builds where that is going to be insane for... 10% reduced mana cost of skills. Again, it's it's niche. It's unique uh, based on a specific build type. Um, but it's definitely good for specific builds. Clarity has 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure if those make it free or if that makes it like half the cost. Um, because efficiency is kind of like we, we still we think we know, but we're not sure. Like it's one of those things that's hard to gauge before it actually goes live, but that could potentially be huge. Uh, life mastery, 10% increased maximum life, 10% reduced life recovery rate. That's very good for most builds. Regenerate 2% of life per second while moving. That's huge for so many life builds. Plus 50 to maximum life. That's huge. 15% reduced life cost of skills. So that's great if you're going to run Petrified Blood or if you're going to run Blood Magic, anything like that, where you really want to have some kind of bleeding or some kind of life usage, but you don't want it to really hinder you. It's actually really good for leveling too, like especially as like a melee character. You can go pick up Blood Magic, get that node, and now it's sustainable for like an archer um which current like previously archers had a really hard time uh leveling and sustaining uh you had to get like four nodes of mana um so that's really big and there wasn't like a mana leech which is unfortunate because mana leech would have been big um same with life leech i'm kind of surprised there's not a leech in here uh 50 increased life recovery from flask when on low life uh, again, that's huge for Petrified Blood. Vitality has 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. Again, we just don't quite know how good that is. We we have an idea, um, but we don't quite know yet. Um, but life is looking pretty solid. And then the number in this second column is how many instances of it. So you can actually get all of these probably fairly easily. Armor Mastery, 60% to armor when affected by a guard skill buff. That's pretty big. Uh, you take 30% reduced extra damage from critical strikes. That's also pretty big. 20% uh, chance to defend with 200% of armor. That's really good for like bosses and really tanky rares. 50% um, increased stun threshold. That's pretty nice as well. Termination has 25% increased mana reservation efficiency. So it just helps you get that extra aura in. Uh, and the last one is reflect physical damage equal to 500% of physical damage prevented when hit. So if you're super high in armor and you're like blocking a shaper's like 5k hit down to 2500, and then you're multiplying 2,500 times five. Um, that's significant. That's significant. 
That's going to be... Twelve thousand five hundred damage that you would reflect back to Shaper in that instance. That's pretty nice. Armor and energy shield mastery. There's two of these. So you can only get half of them. Plus one to armor per one maximum energy shield on helmet. Okay, so you can normally have like three to four hundred ES on helmets. So three to four hundred extra armor. That's pretty nice. Defend with 120% of armor while not on low energy shield. So if you're above half health, you get 120% multiplier of armor. That's pretty cool. Increases in reduction to armor also apply to energy shield recharge rate at 20% of their value and 20% reduced effective curses on you. That's pretty nice. So that and guardian gives you 100%, I believe. It might be that Guardian and the the Pantheon, but that's still really, really good. All right. Physical. Okay, now we're getting into the specific, like more nitty gritty stuff. Physical. War Banner has 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. 20% chance to impale enemies on hit. That's pretty big. 60% reduced reflected physical damage taken. That's really nice. Uh, overwhelm. 15% physical damage reduction. That's nice. 40% increased physical damage with skills that cost life. Wow. That's huge for like berserkers that are going to go blood magic anyway. 40% free damage. Cool. Skills that have lingering blades have a 20% chance to leave two lingering blades instead of one. Skills that leave lingering blades have plus 10 to maximum lingering blades. That makes going like Blade Flask, Blade Fall much more appealing. Um, because that means that you can get 30 blades on the ground and you can explode 30 of them. That's really nice. That's really nice. All right, Fire Mastery. He's talking about Blade Flask, Blade Fall. Fire Exposure you inflict applies an extra negative five to chaos res or to fire res that's big uh recover two percent of life when you ignite a non-ignited enemy that's pretty big 40 percent of physical damage converted to fire damage that's huge 20 percent chance to cover enemies in ash when they hit you holy moly okay so blade flash blade fall might actually be making a comeback thanks to fire mastery alone 1% increased fire damage per 20 strength. Okay, so there's a world where you take iron reflexes and you strength stack as chieftain and you go blade flash, blade fall, and you nuke the world. Just going to throw that out. That That is a thing that could happen this league very easily. 20% to fire damage over time multiplier, negative 30 to fire res. I mean, I think that's a very fair trade-off. Um... Reservation Mastery. Okay, so this is going to be efficiency stuff. 8% increased damage on you for each of your aura or herald skills affecting you. Okay, that's nice. 15% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. Okay. 30% increased life reservation efficiency of skills. Okay, that's really good. 30% increased area of effective aura skills. So that's some for a little bit of love back for the aura bots. Auras from your skills have 15% increased effect on you. So that's good for people that are wanting to keep themselves up. Uh, like specifically like defensive or offensive, but you're only caring about it on you. So not minion builds, but if you're the one actually using it. Non-curse aura skills have 50% increased duration. So that's all of your vols. So vol discipline and vol grace get 50% increased determination in vol haste and vol righteous fire. That's huge. 
That's a lot of extra bossing capability that we haven't had before. That's really big. And you can get all of those if you get all the reservation nodes. Um, obviously, most people wouldn't, but there might be a world where you get like four of those pretty easily for a lot of builds that are actually going to want to scale auras themselves. All right, Brand Mastery. Uh, this is one of the, the two that I was really considering playing. Recover 10% of mana when a brand expires while attached. That's okay. That's better if you're doing like the um, Archmage stuff, but the Archmage stuff isn't as good as it used to be. So I don't know. There would have to be some serious changes for that to probably be huge. It's not that it's bad. It's just there's probably better ones. Brands have 30% increased area of effect if 50% of attached duration expired. So that's great for clear. Brands attach to a new enemy each time they activate, no more than once every 0.3 seconds. That's really big for clear. So now you don't have to get the medium cluster jewel. You can just get it off the tree, which is great because that was such a quality of life improvement for brands that it made it feel really bad to leak start like specifically like penance brand and things that you need to move around very quickly for them to be good um that's a great quality of life brand recall has a 50 percent increased cooldown recovery rate that's very nice you can cast two additional brands and 40 percent increased brand attachment range so for most builds they're going to get the two additional brands the 40 percent increased brand attachment range and then probably the attached to a new enemy uh, just to help their clear out. I would guess those are the three most common out of all of those. Um, but I could see there would be a world where brand recall is, is worth taking um, instead of maybe the range. Uh, Leech Mastery. So 20% increased maximum total life recovered per second from Leech then mana recovered and ES recovered. So all three of those are really good and it lets you specialize in whatever type of leech you really need, whether you need mana or energy shield or life. 30% increased damage while leeching, that's pretty nice. 100% increased total recovery per second from life, mana, or energy shield reach. So that basically gives everybody new vault pack. That's nice. And it doesn't have a penalty with it. That's really nice. So that makes leech builds so much more effective. Work high mastery. Uh, exert attacks deal 25% increased damage. Work highs cannot exert travel skills. Remove an element when you work cry. That's really nice. Recover 15% of life when you work, use a war cry. That's huge. 20% increased damage for each time you've war cried recently. That's big for the big, huge attacks. War cries deliberate enemies for one second, and they have a maximum of 10 power. Or a minimum of 10 power. Oh, that's nice. All right, attribute mastery. This one was already spoiled. 5% increased all attributes. 1% increased damage per 5 of your lowest attributes. So that's if you're scaling all of your attributes. And then there is plus 5 strength, int, or dex per allocated mastery passive skill. Um, making an int wonder, an int stacking wonder, or making a dex stacking like a hollow palm or a archer just got a whole lot easier. Like significantly easier. But there's only three of these, so I'm, I haven't seen the full skill tree yet uh, to get a really good idea of where these are located, if it's going to be easy to get all three. If it's easy, but you really only need two, right? You only need the global attribute, 5%, and then whatever one you're trying to scale. So you only need two out of the three. So when you're making a, a skill tree for any of those characters, you just need to plan on getting two of the three attribute masteries. 
Oh, I bet I know where they are. It's where the old int, dex, and strength ones were. So you can get dex and int, or int and strength, or strength and dex. Okay, that's fine. Block mastery. Plus two to maximum chance to block attack damage. That's pretty nice. Plus two to maximum chance to block spell damage. Again, that's very nice. Plus 20 life gained when you block and mana gained when you block. That's a nice quality of life. I don't know how much that will be used because there's, you can just, I don't think block builds struggle with the little numbers, but that would be nice for leveling and like respecking out of it and picking a different one later. I will say that like there's a world where I pick that early on when leveling shield crush and then get out of it as I actually get like a really good shield or whatever. Um, 3% increased spell damage per 5% chance to block spell damage. Okay. And then it, the same for attack. So whether you're going attack or spell, there's only two of these. I'm guessing one is going to be guardian. One is going to be um, by uh, duelist. Uh, Templar and duelist is where I'm guessing these two are going to be. So... You're probably going to get either spell and spell or attack and attack just based on what build you are. But there is a world where you want to get that 2% higher chance to block spell damage and attack damage. Um, so that's something to keep in mind of too. Attack mastery. Okay, there's seven of these. Plus three to melee strike range. That's huge. That's so nice because you can get that all over the tree um and go into just that one strength skills which target additional enemies can do so from 30 percent further away that's nice 50 percent increased mana reservation efficiency of stand skills 40 percent increased melee damage with hits at close range okay so that's like uh their own that's a way to bump strike up this is a lot of strike love 1% increased attack damage per 16 strength. Ruthless hits intimidate enemies for 4 seconds. So that's really nice. All those are very good. Dual wielding mastery. 15% chance to block spell damage while dual wielding. Dual wielding does not inherently grant chance to block attack damage. Ooh. 1% to offhand critical strike chance while dual wielding. Okay, that's pretty good. 60% increased damage while wielding two different weapon types. That's big. 20% uh, chance to gain an elu gain elusive when you block while dual wielding. Okay. 15% chance to block attack damage if you have not blocked recently. Okay. 20% chance to maim enemies with main hand and blind with offhand. That's really good. So you, you'd probably almost always get the last one. And then the other two are just more niche for whatever you're trying to do with your build. If you need more damage or you need more survivability. That's cool. Fortify Mastery. So you get two of these. Cool. So melee hits Fortify. That's big because that basically gives every melee user a 7 link. But it has negative 3 to maximum fortification. The next one is plus 3 to maximum fortification though. Man, like, why do you go champion now, though? I guess for the impale stuff, but still, like... Oh, no. That that might be too much power. That may get nerfed uh, later on. But that's really good. Um, I would definitely use that as shield crush. 100% increased fortification duration. That's really good. 10% reduced damage over time taken while you have at least 20 fortification. I need the number of the new maximum. So I think what the, the call is, is that you always just take melee hits fortify here. Unless you're champion. And then you go plus three maximum fortification. And then if you are going to get the other one, I think you just get the probably the duration one. Link mastery. Okay, so this is brand new. Uh, enemies inflict elemental ailments on you instead of link target that's really good for a taunt bot 
20% increased damage per link target. So that's good if you're linking per linked target. Does that give the damage to you or to them? That's interesting. I need I, I would need to research that more. Your link targets take 5% reduced damage. That's huge. Enemies near your link targets have fire, cold, and lightning exposure. Holy moly. That's some support love right there. Minion defense mastery. Minions have plus eight to all maximum elemental resistances. That's pretty nice. Link skills can target minions. You have to take a node for that? That's unfortunate. Minions leech 1% of damage as life. That's pretty good. Convocation has 40% increased cooldown recovery rate. That's also pretty good. Minions have 15% reduced life recovery rate. And they have 30% increased maximum life. Holy smokes. Okay. There's definitely going to be a, a minion instability build around that. Minions recover 5% of life on minion death. Is that going to... I wish it was... I wish it was everybody recovers 5% of life on minion death. Then you could have a, a healing death minion. That would be cool. Two hidden mastery. 3% chance to deal triple damage. Okay, you always take that. 40% increased damage with hits against rare and unique enemies. Okay, that's really good. 10% increased armor per red socket on main handed weapon. 10% increased evasion rating per green socket on main handed weapon. 15% more stun duration with two hand weapons. And attacks with two hand weapons deal 60% more damage with hits and ailments. 30% reduced attack speed. That's really big too. So the triple damage in that one are huge. And the hits against rare is really big. Curse mastery. All right. 20% chance to ignite, free shock, and poison curse enemies. That's awesome. 20% chance for hexes you cast, which can gain doom to be applied with maximum doom. Okay. Non-cursed enemies you inflict. Non-cursed enemies you inflict non aura courses on are blinded for four seconds. Okay, so a little bit of survivability. Your curses have 20% increased effect if 50% of curse duration expired. It's good for bossing. Enemies you curse are hindered with 15% reduced movement skill. That's big. 30% Increased mana reservation see of curse or skills. That's pretty good. Resistance ailment protection mastery. Corrupted blood cannot be afflicted on you. That's huge. You cannot be maimed or hindered. You cannot be impaled. 20% chance to avoid being stunned. 20% reduced effect of curses on you. Uh, 12 to all res, 7 to chaos res. Those are all really good, and that gives us a great way on the tree to deal with whatever our build needs. Um, and now you don't have to get a corrupted blood jewel. You can get real jewels and just pick that up, and there's six instances of that, so almost every character should be able to get to that fairly easy. Um, and then, of course, you can get a corrupted jewel later and spec out of all of it. But it's great that we have that while like leveling because um, corrupted blood can easily kill you while leveling energy shield mastery okay here's the good stuff 30 percent increased light radius light radius is based on energy shield and stuff like okay there it is uh cannot be frozen if energy shield recharge has started recently okay stun threshold is based on 50 percent of your energy shield instead of life Okay, that's actually really good. Uh, regenerate 2% of energy shield per second. It's also very good. Gain 3% of maximum mana as, max, as extra maximum energy shield. That's also very good. 
Discipline has 25% increased mana reservation efficiency. So the only one of those that isn't great is the frozen one because you want froze all the time. Um, but yeah, all that's really good. Uh, accuracy mastery. 30% increased accuracy rating if you've killed recently. Okay. Precision has 100% mana reservation efficiency. Okay. Dexterity's accuracy bonus and stick grants plus three accuracy rating per dexterity. That's really big if you're deck stacking. Even though, yeah, that's really big if you're deck stacking. 40% increased accuracy rating against unique enemies. That's also really big. Wand mastery. Oh. 10% chance to gain a power charge on critical strike with wands. Unnerve enemies for 4 seconds when hit with wands. One attacks fire an additional projectile. Increases in reduction to spell damage also apply to attacks while wielding a wand. 0.5% of attack damage leads to life and mana. Intelligence is added to accuracy rating with wands. Holy moly. Okay, so you get Leech, Accuracy Rating, Wands Fire an Additional Projectile, and 10% to gain, gain a Power Charge on Crit? That's like, oh, if you want to play an in-stacking Wander, this is the league, bro. Holy moly. Damage over Time Mastery, okay. 30% increased effect of cruelty. 10% to damage over time multiplier if you've killed recently. So that's really good for like tricksters. 15% increased duration of elements on enemies. 15% increased skill effect duration. Okay, that's really good for cold dots. 10% less damage taken from damage over time. All that's pretty good. Chaos Mastery. This is the biggie, though. Well, these two are the biggies. Chaos Mastery. One to Chaos... Da oh, we've had this one spoiled. Per four Chaos Resistance, plus one to all Chaos Skill Gems. Lose 10% of life for ES when you use a Chaos Skill. 20% increased effect of Withered. 5.5% 5 .5 of damage, damage leads to this Energy Shield. 17 to Chaos Res, and 40% of physical damage converted to Chaos Damage. Flasks. Recover 10% of life when you use a Life Flask while in low life. Utility Flask gain 1 charge every 3 seconds. Life and Mana gain 1 charge every 3 seconds. Flask applied to you have a 10% increased effect. That's huge. Remove a random elemental ailment when you use a Mana Flask. Remove a random non-elemental element when you use a life flask. Okay, that's all like really good. Like really good. Alright, lightning mastery. 40% of physical damage converted to lightning damage. That's big for a lot of builds. Lightning damage from non-critical strikes is lucky. So you get more of the top end more of the time. That's nice. Your shocks can... Increased damage taken by up to a maximum of 60%. Okay, that's huge. 80% increased critical strike chance against shocked enemies. Non-projectile chaining lightning skills chain plus one times. Arc got buffed. Increases in reductions to maximum mana also apply to shock effect at 30% of their value. Holy moly. So, Arc Mage Arc became a thing. Wow. Caster Mastery. Final Repeated Spells has 30% increased area of effect. Okay, that's nice. Spells cause you to gain mana equal to their cost every fifth time you cast them. So, a lot of sustain. Cannot be chilled or frozen while casting a spell. That's actually really big. Spells which grant intensity have plus one maximum intensity. Okay, that's really good. And Unleash has plus one number of seals. So you can get Unleash four early. Ooh. And 1% increased spell damage per 16 end. That's really nice. Charge Mastery. 
cannot be ignited while at maximum endurance charge, cannot be chilled at maximum frenzy, cannot be shocked while at maximum power. 100% increased charge duration. 3% increased damage per endurance frenzy or power charge. So you're going to get the three increased damage and then whatever like power charge is obviously the best one. Um, but there's a world where you take chilled or ignited. Duration mastery. 10% more skill effect duration. 10% less skill effect duration. Debuffs when you expire 15% faster. 20% reduced elemental ailment duration on you. All those are pretty decent. Armor and evasion mastery. Gain 5% of evasion rating is extra armor. That's nice. 8% increased evasion rating per frenzy charge. 8% increased armor per endurance charge. Defiance banner has 10% increased mana reservation efficiency. Plus one evasion rating per one armor on gloves. Okay. Okay. All oh, that's pretty good. Cold mastery. Enemies become chilled as they unfreeze, causing 30% reduction action speed. Oh, so it's max chill too. That's nice. 40% of physical damage converted to cold damage. Okay. 60% increased freeze duration on enemies. That's big. That's like freezing bosses. Ooh. 25% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you shatter an enemy. Cold exposure you inflict applies an additional negative 5 to cold res. And curses on enemies in your chilling areas have 15% increased effect. That's all pretty good. That's all very good, actually. All right, evasion. Cannot be stunned if you haven't been hit recently. That's nice. 40% increased evasion rating if you have been hit recently. That's also very nice. 10% move speed if you haven't taken damage recently. Okay. 30% chance to avoid poison, bleed, and impale. Grace has 25% increased mana reservation efficiency. 100% increased evasion rating from your body armor. So you can get like 6, 7k evasion rating from a chest. That's big. All right. Mine mastery. Each mine applies 2% increased damage taken to enemies near it, up to 10%. Okay. Each mine applies 22% reduced damage dealt to enemies near it, up to 10%. What? Oh, up. Why would you want to deal less damage? That doesn't make sense. 30% increased effect of auras from mines. Skitterbots has 100% increased cooldown recovery. That's really nice. Mines cannot be damaged. Regenerate 2.5% of life per second if you detonate a mine recently. That's really nice. I wish it was life and energy shield, but that's still good. Bow mastery. Blink arrow and mirror arrow have a 60% increased cooldown recovery rate. 2% increased area of effect while wielding a bow. Arrows gain critical strike chance as they travel further up to 100% increased critical strike chance. That's nice. 50% increased Mirage Archer duration. Okay. 8% increased movement speed while phasing. That's big. And 20% chance to gain phasing for 4 seconds on kill. 35% increased damage while you are wielding a bow and tap a totem. So that's if you're playing both playstyles. That's cool. Blind Mastery. Okay. Increased effect of blind. Increased blind duration. Increased critical strike chance against blinded enemies. Cannot be blinded. All those are pretty good. Mark Mastery. 25% increased effect of your marks. Enemies near your marked enemies are blinded. That's pretty dope. 10% uh, increased movement speed if you've cast a mark spell recently. Life fast gain a charge when hit when you hit your marked enemy no more than once every 0.5 seconds. Okay, that's still pretty decent. Gives you some sustain for bosses. Dagger mastery. 100% to crit multi against damage 
against enemies that are on full life. Holy moly. Critical strikes have calling strike. They're giving that to everybody, not just assassin. 8% chance to suppress spell damage for each dagger you're wielding. So up to 16. 8% unless it counts all the X. No, it says wielding. Okay, yeah, so 16. 8% more damage from hits and ailments against enemies affected by at least 5 poisons. Okay. 15% more maximum physical attack damage with daggers. That's really big. Elusive also grants plus 4 crit multi for skills supported by Nightblade. So now you 100% want to run Nightblade. Cool. Ooh, Trap Mastery. All right. 5% chance to throw up to 4 additional traps. That's pretty big. Summon Scarebox now has 50% increased mana reservation efficiency. Can have up to 5 additional traps placed at a time. That's pretty nice. 60% increased trap trigger area of effect. Recover 30 life when your trap is triggered by an enemy. Traps cannot be damaged. So you always want to pick up traps cannot be damaged because they have no health and aoe just nukes them before they can pop off um that's been like the weakest point of traps for forever um so getting that is huge like mines weren't as big of a deal because you could always detonate them traps since they have to trigger them unless you get perfect crime that's really big that's really big that's a lot of uh increased damage even though it doesn't say it's increasing your damage that's a lot of increased damage uh spell suppression mastery prevent two percent of suppressed spell damage okay that's huge deliberate enemies for one second when you suppress their spell damage that's good uh critical strike chance is increased by chance to suppress spell damage so you can get up to a hundred percent you take 50 percent reduced extra damage from suppressed critical strikes okay that's nice 10 percent chance to suppress spell damage if your boots helmet and gloves have evasion so that doesn't say are only evasion so you could be running hybrid and that would still work which is pretty cool poison mastery poisons you inflict on non-poison enemies deal 300 percent increased damage poisons you inflict deal damage 20 percent faster that's big 12 to damage over time multiplier for poisons you inflict on bleeding enemies. Okay, again, ring is good. 20% increased poison duration. Recover 3% of life on killing a poison enemy. Plague the bear has 20% increased maximum plague value. That's all pretty solid. Um, evasion energy shield mastery. 30% increased evasion rating while you have energy shield. 20% increased energy shield recharge recovery rate if you haven't been hit recently. That's big. Because that starts it. And then if you have Wicked Ward, it doesn't stop. So it's fine. 30% uh, of chaos damage does not bypass energy shield. So that's great if you're doing hybrid. Uh, plus one energy shield per eight evasion on boots. I don't know how high you can get evasion on boots. I would have to look. But if you can get like four to 500... Uh, let's say 400 divided by a give you five fifty. Eh, it's all right. It'd be good if you had hybrid boots though, where they already have ES. It's like Centrek. Like that's insane with Centrek. That's like 230 ES boots and 30 move speed, and you cannot. They can't affect they can't leech off you. That's pretty big. Alright, claw mastery. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Oh, almost done. Alright, 1% of attack damage leached is life and mana. That's big. Uh 20% chance to blind enemies on critical strike. That's nice quality of life. Uh 10 life and mana gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. So that's cool that with claws they got it both ways. So you can either leech where you can get the raw hit. 6% um, chance to gain a frenzy charge and a power charge on kill. That's big. Uh, enemies poisoned by you cannot deal critical strikes. 
crit immune poison. Nice. Support skills by Nightblade have 40% increased effective elusive. That's cool. That's really cool. All right, projectile mastery, last one. Projectiles deal 20% increased damage for each enemy pierced. That could be a lot. Deal 20% increased damage for each time they have chained. That's big. 1% increased projectile damage per 16 decks. Knock back enemies if you get a critical strike with projectile damage. 15% more projectile speed or 15% less projectile speed. So these masteries is why they're able to clean up the tree so much. Um, some of them are obviously more powerful than others, but it's definitely exciting um, as far as like, it, it, it's giving me ideas of things that I didn't think were gonna be good going into this league uh, that now possibly could be really, really strong. Um, especially like uh, Bladefall, Blade Blast, Chieftain. I was not expecting to get love and it got like massive amounts of love in this. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and I will uh, go over everything and uh, give you feedback back and we can have a fun little discussion. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.